Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to another video. Today's topic is going to be on the hash crash and what's been going on with the price of the HBAR token. Before we get further into this, it's important to note that this is not financial advice. I'm merely touching on why the price of the HBAR token has fallen so much. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, if you were paying attention to the crypto world scene, whatever you want to call it, the last couple of years, there was a lot of hype around Hashgraph. It was a new form of DLT that was going to use you know, a DAG architecture that would be faster than blockchain, more secure. It was going to you know, achieve asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, civil, be resistant to simple attacks, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of technology in the space that's really cool and new and frontier, and you know it can sell you a lot of cool buzzwords. And no, beyond the buzzwords, Hedera is working on some really, really cool stuff. But the price of their token is nothing to uh, be excited about, to say the least. So if you had watch the launch of the network all the way back, I think it was at the end of the summer, around September. Uh, the price of the token was around 12, 10, 10 cents. And that was around the price that the SAP three holders paid, you know, that the last round of investors when they were doing their token offerings paid. So it went all the way from 12 cents down to about two. And I remember that happening and there was a lot of uh, upset people, but it sort of started to sort of had that price discovery phase around three to four cents bouncing around three, four, three, two, you know, it was, it's choppy. Whenever things get launched, you always have that price discovery where things are really volatile to the, up, volatile to the upside and the downside. And uh, we saw that, but what have we been seeing lately? We've been seeing a dilution in the value. And that's because of the, the, the supply. So H bar, the, the total, the total amount of H bars that's ever going to exist is 50 billion. And that's to be, to be released over a 15 year period, which you might say, Sounds great. You know, that, that's not like it's going to happen over the next one year, two years. Give some time for the, you know, the, the H bar token to propagate and be diversified in the, you know, the, 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 the hands of multiple investors. But if you were a nation state, to give you an example, you know, the, the pegged rate of inflation that usually most uh, economists agree on is best for the economy is around 2%. That's what the U.S. dollar um, inflates at. My country, Canada, inflates around the same thing. The euro, that's, that seems to be like the golden sort of inflation rate, about 2%. Anything more than that, you get hyperinflation. Anything less, you get you know deflation, and people start hoarding your money, and it's not good for the economy. At least if you're a Keynesian uh, economist. But if you you know believe in the H bar token and you know its ability to transact you know microtransactions on the inter internet and you create a whole new you know, blah 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 internet web 3.0, then you have to understand that in the next 15 years, because you know if you are a long term investor, maybe you wanted to see average into this, you're going to see massive inflation. This year alone, when this token launched, there was about 600 million in inflation when it first launched, I think in the first couple of weeks. And now we're at 1.5 billion. So that's more than 100% inflation in less than six months. That's huge. So, and you can you can see that if we go back to the, the token price, just look at the market cap. The market cap when it was 24 million was the, uh, three, three, three cents, almost four. And the market cap today is 17. So that shouldn't be, you know, one cent, right? If you're, you know, if the, co if the token supply was static. But, you know, even back here when it was, you know, close to that market cap, it was only, you know, a cent and a half. So what you're going to have is you're going to have massive amounts of H bars being unloaded, unloaded onto the free market that are going to become liquid. And with low volume, you know, only $2 million a day being traded, there isn't enough liquidity to support that, you know, the, the inflation coming through. And I can point to an old example, if we go to Zcash, so Zcash locked launched back in 2016, that was a big deal. I remember many people were excited about that. And Zcash, at one point in time, you know, had a higher per coin price than Bitcoin ever did. I think that it's even hard to gauge, but it was like $20,000 or something like that. And that's just because I can't even get up there. 3,700. That, that's what it, what, that's what it, you know, gets recorded on coin market cap as, but that's because of the, you know, when Zcash launched, there was no pre-mine, there was no, you know, airdrop. It was just, it started from zero, same as Bitcoin. So it started from zero and now we're 8.3 million circulating supply. That's okay. But the thing is, obviously, if you're someone who bought, you know, back here, you've done, you've done okay for yourself. <laughs> Actually, no, you haven't. It was forty fifty dollars in twenty sixteen, and now it's twenty eight. And that's because of just the massive amount. And again, we can go right to the the market cap. So the market cap when it was right now it's twenty eight dollars. So the market cap around if it was twenty eight dollars back then, can we find it? Let's see, it's close enough. Thirty twenty two so around thirty two dollars. It was a twenty million dollar market cap. And today, at a $237 million market cap, we're still around the $30 range. And that's because there's been a 10x inflation in the supply of, uh, of Zcash to uh, coins, not tokens. And we can talk about the same thing with Algorand. You know, one of the things that kind of bothers me is that so many of these, you know, traditional investor sort of mindset people, at least, you know, who are trying to understand the way that, you know, the, the crypto ICO market worked, they're heavily criticizing it, you know, with the, the, the ERC-20 tokens. You know, look at EOS and Tron. 
they launched at first as ERC-20s. And essentially what those were, were digital IOUs. So you had an IOU in the network once it really launched. So once EOS launched, once Tron launched, I'm not a fan of Tron, by the way, I'm just using it as an example. Um, you hold, you held your TRX tokens as an ERC-20 and you swapped it. And this allowed price discovery. It allowed, you know, more people to hold the token. When you launch like this and you just throw the token out there, look at Algorand. Algorand launched around $2.40. and They had a Dutch auction. And it went all the way up to around three dollars, and I remember that that when it was first coming out, and I thought, oh, that's a cool project. Still in Macaulay School, and it crashed down to eighty uh, fifty cents in a really short period of time. Not a fun investment, and it's just hemorrhaged since then. It's had some really cool tech updates. Um, they just launched their, I think, their version two of the protocol, and but still, guys, you know the the, the amount of supply right now we're at with Algorand or the Algos is almost five hundred million, and its total supply. It says three, three, mil, 3 billion there, but the actual total supply in the long run is going to be 10 billion. So that is still a massive amount of inflation you have to keep in mind. So with Hashgraph, it's at one cent. And I think this is the SAF 2. That's, that's right around what SAF 2 paid. I think they were in the one to three cent range and SAF 3 was 12 cents. So, you know, rip, rip to them. Um, and if you got in a SAF 1, which is really early, I think you paid like a quarter of a cent or close to zero. So they're still up and they could still, once their tokens are unlocked, they can still dump this price down. And again, this is not investment advice, blah, 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 blah. Please don't invest on my behalf. Um, but you got a massive amount of inflation here, guys. I actually have done, done, done the, the math on this. It's not very hard. You can just go to any sort of calculator. But go to 2025. That's only you know five years away from right now. We're going to have 59% of the total H bars in circulation. And if we do the math on that, that means that the current inflation from today is 1,800%. That is huge. That just means that in five years, let's say the Hedera network propagates and grows and there's great dApps and blah, 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 blah. And we see an 1800% increase in market cap. That means that the price of the Hedera token is going to stay exactly where it is right now because the supply isn't going to, you know, supersede the demand. And it's just something that's, uh, you know, a lot of these networks, you have to keep in mind of the inflation of these tokens. It's just out of this world. It's why I'm such a big fan of deflationary tokens like Maker and Kyber, because, you know, you, you don't have this, this, the same sort of problem. Um, yeah, guys, just keep in mind, you know, just because something has a great technology and a great backing and a lot of hype does not mean that it's a great investment. You have to be pragmatic with these things and just realize just how much, you know, how much the foundation holds. Like, look at Ripple, right? I think the Ripple company still holds, like, more than half the supply of XRP. You have to use, if you have a lot of, you know, metrics that you use to judge these tokens, you can't just go in and go, oh, the tech's great, it's fast, blah, 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 because you're going to get burned. Like, look at that to token value. Doesn't mean that the Hashgraph, you know, network isn't going to become a great thing in the future. You know, maybe it becomes, you know, the, the hello feature, the trust layer, the internet, and we're going to have, you know, Spotify building their, their their music marketplace on Hedera for better micropayments. Maybe we're going to have better healthcare records. But in the short to medium term, you have to be really smart. You know, they have made some mis misleading claims about their TPS. Uh, they said they're 10,000 a second. And, you know, that's only their, their their dumb account to account transactions. That didn't account for their um, smart contract operations per second, which is just something that many people don't understand. There's a difference between just transferring value uno to uno, you know, but if you're doing smart contract operations, it's much more complex. And uh, you can read this article here, and I, I believe the actual uh, operations per second of, of a Hedera Solidity smart contract is not that much higher than it would be on the Ethereum network. So there's a lot to consider. If you're a Hedera holder and you've been holding, you know, averaging in, you know, uh, good luck. I hope that. You know, the whole token price does rise so you don't get burned. Kind of sucks that it's all happened around Christmas time. And uh, yeah, but guys, keep in mind, stay smart, stay pragmatic, stay skeptical, and just always, you know, never get too hype on anything, even if it claims to be the next, you know, Bitcoin, because there's only one Bitcoin and it's Bitcoin. That's all I have to say on the matter. Have a good one. Bye.